Hello, my name is Matt. I also go by Absol on the internet. Since 2010, with Heart Gold and Soul Silver, I've been making Pokemon videos. My main goal has been always to catch them all. However, with X and Y, I want to try something different. In addition to catching them all, I want to just make a movie of me playing through the game. It's not going to be a traditional Let's Play by any means, and in fact, I probably won't include a lot of the features of the game. It'll be a focus on the experience. I've done this before with multiple challenges, but there will be no challenge involved in this. Just a regular run through. So, let's go get X and Y and get this started. Last night, I dreamed of Pokemon battles in 3D. This morning, that dream becomes a reality. I'm leaving for GameStop now because they're opening an hour early for the release of X and Y. Let's go get them. Currently waiting it out at GameStop. And Cole has now arrived, adorned in Pokeball shirt. Typically you could have 20 saved up. You got 10 the barriers have risen. Game. And then go into your now these barriers and are rising, and these last barriers are about to rise. <laughs> and as soon as these barriers rise, we're all about to storm into the store and buy it. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I can't wait to get home. Let's open up the games and start playing. I'm going to start with X version. And that's what this walkthrough, or semblance of a walkthrough, will be. Beautiful. Pokemon X. And now have my 3DS here and in that 3DS right now is black 2. However, now let's put in X version. Let's do this. I haven't even started battling yet and I'm already absolutely amazed. Like these graphics and the sound are like beyond anything we've seen before in a Pokemon portable game. And I'm really just impressed so far. And I'm just hoping that it lives up to my expectations and so far it has gone beyond that. 
Now let's get our starter Pokemon. Alright. So, I've always wanted to choose Chespin from the beginning. So that's who I'm choosing. Alright. Now I get Pokédex. Right now I'm taking advantage of official EV training and I'm boosting my attack EVs on my chest pin to the max. This super training is actually pretty great. It's a really fun mini game and doesn't take too long and I actually really enjoy it. This is pretty great for competitive battling too because you can easily make your in-game team viable in the competitive environment unlike the other games where you'd have to like delete all the other EVs you got from all the wild Pokemon and everything. I'm going to just keep going until my chest pin's attack maxes out, which will actually happen soon because all of all the training bags you get from every mission. Going for my first capture in Kalos. Scatterbug. Alright. Oh wow, this Pokedex entry thing looks so cool. I love how Pikachu has its actual voice in this game now. How to Pikachu. Catching Fletchling. Now it is 12.13, still Saturday, I've been playing for a few hours, two hours and ten minutes. I'm really enjoying it. Yep, this is what my life has come to for now. Alright, Chester now is fully trained. Before the first gym, so I'm kind of ridiculous. Now, I'm going to move on in the story a little bit more. Actually, on second thought, I'm doing what I always do. I'm about to go for a walk. And on this walk, my goal will be to evolve my Scatterbug fully. And possibly evolve Chespin. Just get some level grinding in. Maybe catch some Pokemon that I missed in the previous routes. I want to be kind of thorough. And then after that, I'll go after the first gym. Let's go!
Hey look, it's that spooky tree Pokemon that was shown in the Japanese trailers. I had no clue it had two eyes. Maybe it's an evolution. Flameless Rapidash. Look at that. Really cool. Still attempting to level up Scatterbug. And yeah, you can't see anything right now, whatever. All right. Spupa. Let's see if I can get it up to the next evolutionary form before I get home. <sighs> the best lake. Just one of the best spots to just stand around and chill out and stuff. Oh look, Fletchlings. <laughs> I'm so far really enjoying X and Y. It seems really drastically different from the other generations, but I like all the changes. And I think I'll always like the changes. Because honestly, I'm one of those people that's always going to be a fan no matter what really. I haven't even hit the first gym yet, but I've really enjoyed all the extra features. And the fact that I haven't hit the first gym yet just shows how much there is to do in this game. I'm definitely going to look into shiny hunting, because apparently a lot of people have found shinies so far, so I think the ratio might be different. And if it is, shiny hunting may become a lot easier, but that gives me more opportunities to catch more shiny Pokemon. Maybe catch all the shiny Pokemon, like the shiny, shiny glimmering water right now. My 3DS battery just died. But luckily I saved right before it, so I only lost like 20 experience points. So it's not much of a loss at all. Just gotta walk the rest of the way home with no DS to occupy me. First world problems. Fun fact, I still regularly replace my Pokewalker battery. But I've had this Articuno in there for like a week because I just haven't touched hard gold. It has like 9,790 extra watts. Pretty cool. It's a TM on the ground. Hard to truck too. Perhaps maybe Mew can learn this. And these AC adapters just let you keep playing forever if you want to. And as far as that goes with X and Y, that's probably going to be the case with me. Just going to never stop playing. The first gym battle. Let's do this. I really like how it actually takes on the environment of the gym. Like, it's almost exactly like the gym. And I forgot to turn battle scene back on. But you can still see what's happening, obviously. Didn't expect my spupa to last too long. By the way, my current team is by no means final. I'm gonna just keep changing. And here's Vivian, Vivid Papillon or Vivid Butterfly, the final form of Spupa. This one's at level 12, meaning I think it, Spupa might evolve soon unless it's typical gym leader uh, under level Pokemon. We'll see about that. But Pikachu seems to be doing a pretty good job here. Rollout really helps with this gym. There we go. And as a last resort, I had Fletchling, but it's only level 5 right now. There goes Chester. I mean, Chester leveled up. A lot. Really cool. And that's Viola. The 
Look at that badge. That's really cool. Infestation. All right. Lots of camera puns there. Uh, let's move on in our journey. Really went glad I went for that walk earlier rather than later because I was going to save it for the second gym. Now look what it's like outside. It just keeps raining. Perhaps it's a Drizzle Politoed Kyogre. Or maybe another Pokemon has Drizzle. I don't know. I just gotta keep going to find out. This one's actually pretty clear. Vivian. Also, I recently got the experience share, and it's really great in this game because it's just like the experience all from red and blue. As in, every Pokemon gets all the experience after the battle. Not all of it, but a good deal of it. It's well worth it, especially for catching up the rest of my team. Another feature I really like is how the routes actually have names. And I think all the names are actually based on French words and phrases, but I haven't been to enough to see the actual trend yet. This is also happening before the second gym. And now, I have a Quilladin. Awesome. All right, now, I think I'm going to go with my first Pokemon from Fire Red, Charmander. That wasn't my first Pokemon ever, but my first Kanto starter I chose on blue version was also Charmander. I'm going to send a by Bay to PC Box. All right, we got Charmander now. That's what I named my first Charmander. Megastone. Charizardite X. Fletchling evolving. Oh, that one looks cool. Fletchinder. Okay, then. motto of my life. All right, we got Snorlax. Still a Snorlax, which is pretty great, especially before the second gym, which is our next stop, by the way. So yeah, second gym time. I have found my favorite Pokemon. Therefore, I must catch it. I can't believe Absol's available before the second gym. This is great. It'll be a good member of my permanent team from the beginning. It's 
sweet. Alright, so it's midnight now. So it's the ending of day one. And I haven't even gotten the second gym badge yet. But within good reason. I did a lot of level grinding and I fully super trained Absol too. And I did all the secret super training missions which are really cool as well. I may do some more of those later. But I got a lot done today. Definitely playing some more tomorrow because I only stopped because my 3DS battery died again and I'm getting really tired. So I'll see you tomorrow. Day 2 of X and Y. And I just realized that filming the American flag is no longer relevant because Kalos is France, not U America like Unova was. Bike shop in Sillage City, or however you pronounce it. And it's really great sounding. I love the music. Alright, yellow or green? I'm gonna go with green. No, yellow. Yellow, definitely. Alright, now we have the bike. An important key item. I really dig the new register interface. It's really handy. There's a trail. Couldn't find the gym in that city. This place is really cool. Kind of like ruins, almost. Alright, with the whopping 12 hours into the game, we're at our final- we're finally at the second gym. About to face the leader. And this is my current team. And as I, and I reiterate, this team will probably change again. But, I'm really enjoying this so far. There are lots of great Pokémon that can be found early in the game. Like my favorite Pokémon, Absol, which is almost never found this early. Let's do this. Grant. There's some things that seem out of reach no matter how hard you try. However, it's important that you never give up, no matter the opponent or the odds. I can tell from our battle that you and your Pokémon understand that. To commemorate such an impressive show of teamwork, please accept the Cliff Badge. That whole, this whole gym really makes me want to go rock climbing. I might do that sometime. Uh, definitely, inclu definitely included in this video if I do it soon. We get Rock Tomb, which is kind of handy. Alright, second day, second gym. Hopefully we can clear more today. If the game goes faster. If I don't dilly-dally and try and catch everything. Alright, to the third gym we go. Let's skate our way to the third gym battle. Karina.
So now we're taking on the third gym leader, Karina. She's a fighting type gym leader, and she has a lot of interesting Pokemon, including me and Fu, which can surprisingly be found this early on in the game. Uh, my Vivian has a lot of attacks that are strong against fighting types right now, like Psybeam and Draining Kiss. Had no idea that fairy types were actually strong against fighting until this gym. She seems to have a pretty good variety of Pokemon. I also caught this Mr. Mime in the Reflection Cave right before this gym, and I just kind of had it on my team and never deposited it, but it really came in handy in this gym because of its psychic and uh, typing. And I really like that they added Fairy to Mr. Mime as well. Fun fact, there can be female Mr. Mimes because it has a different name in Japan that doesn't involve Mr. And her final Pokemon is really cool, Halucha. It's one of the new Pokemon. It's fighting, flying, and it's a luchador, hawk, so it's pretty much a win-win-win situation. It's got really great typing and a really cool concept. I like how all the gym leaders still focus on the uh, new Pokemon for their final Pokemon. But anyway, that's the third gym. We beat it. Yay. And there's Karina, gym badge number three. This was only an hour after the second badge. Much better than the eight hours between my first and second badge. Cool stuff. Now I can use Surf too. We get Power Up Punch, a completely new move. Oh man. At the top of the Tower of Mastery, we're gonna battle her again, actually with Lucario. So I guess we're going to climb that tower again. Notice the DNA strand on the staircase, or the ramp. Let's just keep climbing. Reminds me a whole lot of Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks. Mega Ring. Lucario versus Lucario. So let's test out Mega Evolution. I really like when they take the gym leaders and they turn them into like all of these big characters in the story instead of just being like random people you see for maybe five minutes in the game. They seem to do this a lot in black and white as well. Uh, alright, so there's the mega evolution button. I'm gonna press it for the first time. Alright, and I'll use power up punch. Oh man. So cool.
Wait, we get to keep the Lucario? Alright. Cool. I'm gonna name it after the guy from the Lucario movie. Aaron. This is why I love playing the game spoiler free. Because I had no idea I'd be able to keep a Lucario. It's something I would have never expected. Plus it's Mega Evolution. So, I guess we should rush onward towards the fourth gym now that we have a Lucario. Not sure if I'm going to use it on my team fully yet, but I don't have a fighting type right now, so I might as well. Let's continue the adventure. So, in a couple of hours I'm driving back to school, to college. It's only like a 30 minute drive. I still can play plenty of Pokemon there. But I'm taking a break after the third gym and after getting that Lucario. And I'm just realizing how interesting it is to make a blind run video like I am right now. In my previous movies involving Butterfree and Absol, I already knew the entire storylines of the games, so I knew which parts to film. But in X and Y, it's really just a major guessing game about what I need to film. I know I need to film the gym battles, and that's about it. So I'm probably not going to be able to show much of the main story just due to not being able to figure out the main story. Another thing I realized is how pure the game is right now. I mean, there are very, very few cheating methods on the 3DS right now. And since the game came out worldwide yesterday, it's very unlikely that the game has already been messed around with and it's very unlikely to find cheated Pokemon. So right now, the GTS and the Wonder Trade service with random people over Wi-Fi are actually very viable methods to get Pokemon. Someday, I'd like to just use the Wonder Trade or something and somehow get on Global Link and somehow find out who traded that Pokemon to me and find a way to thank them somehow. It's completely possible. And it's completely possible without appearing creepy. Kind of, sometimes, I guess, maybe. Anyhow, enough rambling. I'm gonna go on back inside, and I'm gonna keep playing until I drive back. Ladies and gentlemen, more fan service towards Generation 1 fans. Free Lapras. Literally five minutes in the game after Free Lucario. I was wondering where I would have a Surf Pokemon, and I almost taught it to a Love Disc I caught with an old rod. But now, I have a Lapras to surf on. And by the way, this Lapras, I tried soft resetting for it a minute ago just to see if it would change at all. It's always the same nature and characteristic. I'm not sure if it differs between game, but mine was docile, and it likes to take siestas. But yeah. Free Lapras. I'm not complaining. Now we can surf. I haven't surfed yet in this game, really. Oh my gosh. It actually shows the Lapras. This is beyond cool. Nope. Nope. I thought, was, uh, I, thought I was done with tentacles forever. Just, nope. About to make the drive back. Guys, I just found a shiny fur fruit as soon as I got back. It's kind of crazy. This is a really cool shiny too because it's black and it has multiple forms due to the grooming that you can add. I don't want to zoom in on my cool <laughs> then I want to see the fur fruit again. Oh my gosh. This is so unexpected. I've heard your shinies are a little bit easier to find, but 
I'm still pumped. This is awesome. Just look at that thing. It's beautiful. I might have to just use this on my team. <laughs> Fur fruit was really cool. I used to think it was a pre-evolution of Absol because it looks really similar. But it's a dog, which is just as cool. In fact, it was going to be one of my first uh, targets if I decided to shiny hunt. <laughs> so awesome. Oh, and I'm also training another scatterbug. Look at this. Well, that's shiny number one. Hopefully more to come. And after that exciting shiny encounter, Look at that thing. Just not. I haven't seen that yet either. I wonder what type it is. Spiky shield? <laughs> what is this? In addition to protecting the user from attacks, this move also damages any con attacker that makes direct contact. So it's basically like an upgraded version of protect. I'm actually going to teach that over bite. So it's grass and fighting. Did not expect that. That's gonna be really cool, because it's the same type thing as Virizion and Breloom. And it's a pretty good type overall, despite his many weaknesses. All right. Now Stravinsky's evolving. Or Fletchinder. Named him Stravinsky after Stravinsky's Firebird. Now I get one of my favorite Gen 6 Pokemon, Talonflame. Fire and Flying. Really cool. The reason why I'm not using Charizard right now is this. <laughs> Look everyone, it's Pokemon X and Y, the Wind Waker. This is a really cool gym concept. All the gyms here are really nice looking and it looks like they're trying to take full advantage of all the 3D and things you couldn't do with gyms before. Alright, gym leader number four. And this guy wasn't officially revealed, I believe, so it'll be a surprise. Oh, he's an old man named Ramos. I never expected an old man. However, there in the past there have been Bryce and Blaine. For this gym, I was well over leveled, and this is something that typically happens with me, no matter what game it is. Plus, I had a ton of advantages against all of his Pokémon, so it was a lot easier of a fight than it could have been. So I just kind of keep going on trucking, attacking everything with all of the advantages that I have against his Pokémon. Kind of wish it could have lasted longer, his Pokémon could have been higher level, but that's the price of being overleveled. You don't get to experience as much of a challenge. Alright. That was an easy fourth badge. I love how many puns all the gym leaders make all the time in this game. First it started with like the photography puns in the first gym. Now I can finally use Fly too, which will be great for going back and catching Pokemon because I've really missed quite a few. Especially some of the newer ones. And before we take the slide, I forgot to show you what team I was using for this battle. Yeah, this is the progress we've made. Still not a final team, though. Not quite sure what I'm going to use in the end. It's a mystery. It's an adventure. So that's four badges down, four to go. That is, if there are eight badges... There might be more. I have no idea. Gym 
I love his inventions and stuff. Now we're going up against the last gym leader that I actually knew about whenever I started playing the game. The last gym leader actually revealed. Uh, Clement. He's an electric type, and his gym... The background faintly reminds me of a fairy fountain because of all the glimmering and everything. And I didn't really have anything strong against electric types because they're only really weak against ground type moves. So it was an interesting battle for sure. I had a lot of weaknesses to electric types and my flying types. But I still managed to prevail. And it was still a fun battle. His Amolga liked using Volt Switch way too much though. Also, I had no idea what type Heliolisk was whenever he sent it out. No idea at all, except for the hint that it was electric type. I never would have expected a Helioptile to evolve into that. I always thought it would evolve like a helicopter or something, but no, it's just the Helios definition meaning from the sun instead of Heliocopter. I always thought that for some reason it would start flying or something. But anyway, yeah. Fifth Gym versus Clement the Inventor. There goes Clement. Or Clement. Because it's French. That's a pretty looking badge. That's probably my favorite looking one so far. And we get Thunderbolt from him. That's probably one of the best gym TMs ever, right there. Thunderbolt's a great move. Alright, so that's it right there. Gym 5. Not sure what's in store next. Definitely Gym 6, but there might be something in between. Alright, so walking around at night now. Ooh, it's only like 9.30, which is pretty early for me. <laughs> uh, got my fifth badge, just strolling around, taking a break from Pokemon. Probably going to hit up an actual gym in a minute because it's free for students, so why not? Turns out the gym was closed since it's Sunday. Guess I can't super train myself tonight. Alright, heading for the six badge or whatever's up here, I made two realizations. First, I realized that the starters were a triangle of types. Like, uh, Delphox is fire and psychic, uh, Chestnut is grass and fighting, and Greninja is water and dark. So each one is doubly weak against the one before it. Which, and, the, and they're all doubly strong against another. It works out really cool. And also, the Hex Maniac trainer class is back. And I don't think this has been a trainer class since Ruby and Sapphire. So this could be a potential hint towards a Hoenn remake. But anything can be looked at as that because everyone wants to try and find hints at Hoenn remakes. But yeah. Five minutes after that, another mention of the Hoenn region by this little girl. And this guy is like... I'm Gaddy, I have a scintillating story for you. Would you like to hear my story? Yes. Having a thunderstorm makes you feel so relaxed, don't you agree? I have the feeling he might be related to maybe the bar that you find in the Pokemon Center or something. This guy's interesting. Six gym and it's fairy type. And it's like a giant dollhouse, which is really weird. But I kind of like it. Valerie. Here's the sixth gym. So we obviously covered a ton of ground in one day. I just had a whole lot of time to play on Sunday and I just knew that I wouldn't be able to play much on Monday the next day. So I covered five gyms in one day. Uh, fairy type was interesting for me. I kept forgetting what its true weaknesses and strengths were. So I used Absol for a while without realizing that it was actually weak against all the fairy moves. It managed to, it managed to take out Mawile though, with Shadow Claw, because now Ghost and Dark type moves actually go through Steel. Next up was Mr. Mime. 
and I took it out with Shadow Claw pretty easily. But last up was Sylveon, which was a different story. Sylveon is a defensive beast. Especially with special attacks. And I did not know that at this point. Kept using Dazzling Gleam on me, and I kept trying to use all these special attacks that did pretty much nothing. So it put up a pretty good fight, especially with my ignorance on the subject. But yeah, that's six gym, and definitely the last thing that I took on for the day on day two, because I was tired at this point. That's the six badge inside the dollhouse. get Dazzling Gleam. Dazzling. Alright. Now let's leave this strange dollhouse and move on. Actually, I'm probably not going to move on tonight. I'm probably going to save right after this meeting or whatever happens here and go to sleep. But the Pokeball Factory sounds intriguing. I guess I'll check that out in the morning. Oh, and I might as well show you all my team. It hasn't changed since uh, probably the fourth badge. I have my Absol. Yep. I have. I'm not using the shiny Furfru yet because I'm still deciding how I'm gonna super train it. Well, it's been a good second day. Day three will be all right, but I have a lot of stuff to do in the afternoon. So unless I wake up really early, I probably won't be able to get much done until late at night. Day three. And I'm up really early just to play Pokemon. This will probably be one of the only chances I get today because I have to drive later back home again for community band. And I have a lot of class today. But for now, I'm just going to play to my heart's content. This is probably the easiest decision of my life. Boom. Oh, okay, we get both of them. I was expecting something like that to happen. <laughs> I'd hate for someone who didn't know what a Master Ball was to just pick the big nugget. So this morning I caught a Shelmet, and I just used the GTS to get a Karma Blast, and it was really easy. So now, I have an S Cavalier. Now I'm going to catch a Karma Blast and trade it for a Shelmet. Easy, quick trade evolutions. And there's Excel Door. Cool. That's the power of the GTS. Right now I'm back in my car, about to head back home. Uh, I've spent most of my playtime today actually not doing anything storyline related at all and instead I have been focusing on obtaining all the forms of Vivillon or Vivian which will be detailed in a later video my lens is really fogging up and also trying to hunt using the Masuda method for a shiny Lapras because I'm trying to see if the shiny chances are greatly affected by that or not so I'm probably gonna play some more when I head home but for now, just appreciate my Hawaiian shirt. If I don't, uh, I'll probably be playing some more tonight. Home sweet home. And I found another Pokemon that I need to catch. And this one is Phantom. Some kind of Phantom Stump.
Well then. I guess I'll catch that another time. Thanks to the air conditioning, my room is always really cold. And today I feel like I have the common cold. So it all fits very well with where I am in the game, where it is very cold. <laughs> and I'm just plowing through the snow on a, a Mamo swine. I love all the Pokemon riding they added. It's just too much fun. <laughs> all right. Gym 7. Psychic looking lady. <laughs> Maybe it's a man with crazy hair. Probably a lady. Olympia. Interesting. That was a lot of money. I love the amulet coin. The psychic badge. Fancy. Like a little orb at the bottom. Looks kind of like a mega stone or something. So now one badge remains. And I'm gonna warp out. It was a really cool looking gym with uh, all the space everywhere. And I'll let me show you my team real quick before I move on. I have Pixel, Chester, Lapras, Absol, Talon Flame. And I actually just have this combi to try and get horde encounters quickly with Sweet Scent. But yeah. The bookshelves here tell an interesting story. The king couldn't escape war with those who targeted a wealthy Kalos. The war grew so violent and angry, the king was forced to send his own beloved Pokemon into battle. There's research. AZ had a younger brother. It said he led a legion of greedy souls who wanted to seize the Kalos region. His dark intention was to make it his own. But when he saw how Kalos had been ravaged by the war, he took the weapon his brother had created and he buried that weapon deep underground. The king's younger, younger brother told his progeny the location of the ultimate weapon and died. That is something to be used by sophisticated powers, not by humans. Human beings must create a world where such a weapon is unnecessary. The king's name was AZ, and he was both the beginning and the end. He used technology unlike any seen during that era to unite Kalos for the first time. The king was proud of the technology he used to bring Kalos prosperity, but he couldn't help but use it in a way that had never been intended. AZ, the man who was king, disappeared. When AZ, the man who was king, vanished, he took the key to the ultimate weapon. That is the item required to activate the weapon. Full of sorrow, AZ built the ultimate weapon. When he did this, he left the following words. What's wrong with bringing something you love back into this world? Without my beloved Pokemon, no other Pokemon have meaning. The mountains will never know one another, but people can encounter other people. And people and Pokemon mixed together. Over the ages, people and Pokemon worked alongside one another and created many things. As a result of this, a leader appeared among the humans. That leader sought to produce even more goods. Increased production of goods created a gap between the haves and have-nots. And that almost has a little bit of parallel to the French Revolution. Whenever the Third Estate rose up, the, the poor people rose up, and uh, they went after the rich, greedy, uh, upper class and nobility of France. But at the same time, a lot of this is a lot different, obviously. 
Interesting storyline, though. Alright, so now I'm presented with an interesting option. Red button or blue button. It's like the freaking Matrix, almost. I think I'm going to press the blue button. The Xerneas button. Because Xerneas is supposed to represent life. Darn it. <laughs> Whatever. It was just like that Big Nugget slash Master Ball thing. Gotta save the world, I guess. Whatever. So right now I'm outside my apartment, and I'm walking to class. And I'm at the climax of the game. So, I guess I'll have to catch Xerneas afterwards. And by the way, I've been doing some research. I was hoping to reset for a shiny Xerneas, or Eveltal at least. But I figured out that they're shiny locked. Like, uh, Reshiram and Zekrom were in black and white because people have been soft resetting for days and haven't been able to find them yet and there has been no actual picture on the internet of a shiny anywhere so I'm just going to assume that they're shiny locked and not waste my time on it they'll probably be given out in events sometime like maybe Reshiram and Zekrom will hopefully we'll get the red Genesec sometime from last generation too because it was so cool and I just wish we could legitimately get it what if this world actually is the alternate timeline where Team Flare is successful What if it is? However, none of that would make sense because we'd all have to be French or descendants of Team Flare because all the people would probably die too. Oh, and there's Samus and a Metroid.
I got this Pichu the other day from a good friend of mine named Brandon, and he uh, actually found a light bulb Pikachu after searching for a really long time, and that means Pichu can get Volt Tackle. This is very significant because uh, in Generation 5, there was no way to get the light ball item, and it's finally returned to being available on Pichu. So I'm glad that the uh, light ball has returned because I really missed Volt Tackle and Pikachu's extreme boost from it. <laughs> Just glad to see that return, I guess. Alright, through the online on X and Y, there's a feature called Wonder Trade. And through Wonder Trade, you pretty much give out a random Pokemon and you get a random Pokemon in return. And today, Bulba Garden, one of the main sites, has started uh, a tradition that will hopefully carry on called Wonder Trade Wednesday. I've hatched an entire box of Amoras, one of the fossil Pokemon that's highly sought after. And I have a ton of those, so I'm just going to start trading them to people, and let's see what I get in return afterwards. After a while, let's see how many we get. That's a Japanese Weedle. Alright, here's a whole box of what used to be Amoras. Probably one of the best ones I got was a Vile Plume. And the, the funniest one was this Miltank named Grace M, obviously named after a person. Which is kind of scary, almost like bullying, but I guess it's still kind of funny. I got a lot of Japanese Pokemon. I really like how you can see the country of nationality. It's from a different country. Mostly American or Canadian. But I also got quite a few German. Wonder trading is really interesting because of that. Oh, and like French too. Tournal Tour. Yeah, most of them seem to be early game Pokemon except for like Mile Plume, Nose Pass, Milzank. Doug Trio. It's overall a pretty good deal, because I just ran around and hatched the eggs. And look what I got out of it. So I'm walking back to my apartment now. Really haven't accomplished much in the past 24 hours, other than breeding all those Amoras and wonder trading them. My cold has gotten a little bit worse, but I have a free afternoon tomorrow after class in the morning. So and then I'm going to probably finish the main campaign. Badge number eight. The final badge. Versus this guy. And it's ice type. AKA cold things. And I still have a cold. In fact, the cold has gotten worse. And that's probably why I haven't progressed as much in these past few days. There's the H badge, which looks strikingly similar to Cryogonal. Which is a Pokemon I really like. It's in my top 10, I think. And we get Ice Beam. Another useful thing from the gym leader. Just like Thunderbolt earlier.
Alright, so that's eight badges. Next up is the Pokemon League. I think. Probably. We'll slide on our way on out and find out. Really cool badge check area. Really cool. Onwards we go. I'm about to set foot into the Pokemon League, basically knowing no one there. And oh my gosh, that is a beautiful castle. Is that, it must be based off like Notre Dame, the cathedral. go on and go after the Elite Four. Overall, I found the Elite Four in this game to be very interesting. Seabold and all the others just seem like extremely noble people that you'd find in like a typical monarchy. And they had a really good selection of Pokemon, like I'd never seen Barbarical before. And I almost got wrecked by the Gyarados in the first battle. I did originally have some narration to go with this, but the game was way too loud for to hear it, so I decided just to speed it up for your convenience.
Alright, before I face the champion, I have multiple guesses as to who it's going to be. One of my guesses was uh, going to be the uh, one of the, our rivals from earlier in the game, like Tierno or them. But I couldn't decide exactly who it would be, and I already fought Serena in Victory Road. Uh, another idea was Professor Sycamore, which is a very unlikely idea. Then another idea was AZ, the king. But also, we haven't heard anything else from like the supermodel that was like announced at the beginning of the game. Let's just see who it is. The Radiant Chamber. Really shiny. Oh my gosh, this is like gorgeous. Oh! And look which prediction I got. It's that lady, Diantha. Let's see how she does. What Pokemon she has and everything. Lucha. This is one of the crowd favorites from this generation. It's fighting and flying. Meaning, uh, I have a terrible type matchup right now. I expected to use a flying type move. Don't have necessarily anything that resists that too well. Just gonna use Lapras. That flying press move is pretty impressive. Alright, cool. Alright, next up is Tyrantrum, which must be the other fossil Pokemon. Uh... I expect it to be part rock type. Maybe dragon or something. Yeah. Cool stuff. Go Lapras. Gudra. That must be Gumi's final form. Oh my gosh, it's so cool looking. Uh, Dragon Claw. Sweet. Uh, Forest Story. Forest Story. Get it, get it. Auroras. This one is ice and something. I'm assuming dragon. But it might be rock. Evolve form of Mora. Yeah, it's rock. Well then. Lapras is just cleaning the house. Gorgeist. <laughs> what the heck? I have no clue what this Pokemon is. I assume it's ghost type or something. That's interesting. Looks like Princess Bubblegum or something. Uh... Let's do what Mail Combi does best. Use Gust. Of 
Poor guys look so much like Princess Bubblegum from Adventure Time. Ghost type was added. Trick or treat. It's pretty much the Halloween Pokemon. Gardevoir. Ooh, it's it's psychic and fairy now. That's, that's a tough decision with Absol, because it's weak against fairy. But it has an advantage through the psychic type. Oh my gosh. Mega Gardevoir. Wasn't expecting that. Oh, but we did pretty well. We did a ton of damage first turn. Stravinsky. We use acrobatics. Boom. I love Talonflame. I think I said that in one of my first uh, X and Y X speculations video, and I'm glad it turned out to be such a good Pokemon. But I should, really shouldn't be talking about that, because I just beat the champion. I'm the Pokemon League champion, and I have beaten Pokemon X version. Augustine Sycamore is the name. I was thinking Augustine was AZ for a second, when she mentioned the name earlier. Hall of Fame. Heck yeah, male combi. This game has a legit ending ending. It's an amazing turnout. All these people are here to celebrate your achievements. I'd like to present you with the honor of Kalos for the bravery you showed battling Team Flair. I'm so proud of you all. On behalf of the entire Kalos region, I'd like to say... Thank you. There's AZ. Battle with me. What? I want to know what a trainer is. What? What? We have another battle.
I never would have expected this in a million years. I mean, I was kind of hoping we'd battle AZ at some point, but I wasn't expecting right now. Sucker Punch. I said, Sucker Punch. Go Lurk. All three of them are definitely Pokemon of Antiquity, that's for sure. Go Lurk is basically a living mecha. Torkoal is a tortoise which lived forever. And Sigilith is based off the Nazca Lions. That's interesting. But man, I never thought we'd be having this battle. Thank you so much for battling with me. Now I finally feel free. Free from the part of me mired in sorrow. The part of me that built the ultimate weapon. That was a great ending. Incredible. <laughs> 